In this video, I'm going to create the exterior walls of this shed. I'll start out by going to my floor, floor plan. Go to my architecture tab and select wall. And you notice that it defaults to the basic wall generic 6 inch. And I'm going to start out with that, but I'm going to modify it. I'm going to select my rectangle tool in my draw menu. I'm going to draw a rectangle. Don't try to line it up with your slab. Draw it on the outside. We're going to create the walls out here and then move them later. Hit modify twice to get out of that. I'm going to select each wall and verify that they're oriented correctly. Notice these blue arrows. They should be on the outside, not on the inside. They should be out here. Verify each wall. I'm going to go ahead and modify the walls. I'm going to select all four walls. To do that, I'm going to hover over one of the walls. And don't select it, don't click on it, just hover over it. And then uh, touch the tab key. And notice that when I touched the tab key, it highlighted all four walls. And then I selected, and it selected all four. I'm going to edit the type. I'm going to select Edit Type. I'm going to create a new wall design. I'm going to duplicate this one. Select Duplicate. And I'm going to call this wall Exterior. Call it Exterior Shed 5 inch. I'm not absolutely certain of the thickness of the wall until I actually construct it. I'll come back and change this dimension later. I'm going to edit the design. Select Edit. I'm going to specify the material of line item 2, the stud wall. I'm going to select it and select this material browser here, this box here. I'm going to scroll down and find soft wood lumber. I'm going to highlight it. My stud wall is going to be made out of lumber. I'm going to duplicate it. And the duplicate, I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it I'm calling it Stud Wall Wood and select OK. I'm going to change the thickness to 3.5 inches. That is the nominal thickness of a 2x4 lumber. I'm going to add another layer. Notice that this is the exterior of the wall, and on this side is the interior side. I'm going to add a layer on the inside. Select line 3, highlight it, and select insert. And notice that it installed the new line item here in, in, in the core boundary. I'm going to select this icon down and move it down. What I'm going to insert here is a, a layer of gypsum board. It's a finishing material. It's a piece of board made out of chalk and it's used for fireproofing. I'm going to Select this little pull-down menu and change it to Finish 1. It's a finish layer. And it's outside the core boundary because what's inside here, inside the core boundary, is actually the structural part of the wall that holds up the roof. This gypsum that I'm going to install here is not structural. It's just a fireproofing layer. It's a finish layer. I'm going to open the Material Browser by selecting here. And I'm going to search for gypsum and select it. I'm going to change the thickness to one half inch. I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to highlight line item two. I'm going to select insert. And I'm going to add my sheathing, my plywood sheathing. And it's going to be structural. So I'm going to include it here in between the core boundary, the structural part of the wall. I'm going to select the Material Browser. I'm going to look for Plywood. And select it. 
I'm going to change the thickness of the plywood to 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to insert another layer. I'm going to select line item 1 and select insert. And you notice it inserted it outside the core boundary. This is going to be a uh, what's referred to as a membrane layer. It's a very thin layer and I'm going to change the material. Select the material browser and I'm looking for, let's scroll all the way to the top, an air infiltration barrier. I'm going to select that and I'm going to uh, duplicate it and I'm going to change the name to Tyvek. Tyvek is the brand name. Select OK. I'm going to leave the thickness at zero. This Tyvek is a very thin sheet of plastic and it's not going to be visible in the cross section anyway so I'm going to leave it at zero. And because it's a membrane layer I can leave it at zero. Usually Revit wants you to specify the thickness of the material and uh, membrane layers can be left at zero. I'm going to insert another layer. This layer is going to be a finish layer. It's going to be my siding. So I'm going to specify it as finish 2. Usually finish 1 is on the interior and finish 2 is on the exterior. I'm going to select the material browser and I'm going to search for plywood because the siding is very similar to plywood sheathing. I'm going to select it and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it siding. With it highlighted I'm going to look in my asset browser for the siding. Open up that window. Now this is your Autodesk library. It's a complete library of all your materials. And I'm going to search for siding. And I'm going to select this one, horizontal 6 inch beige. Double click on it. And close this window. And you see that now my siding is going to look like this in this color. I'm going to select OK. I'm going to change the thickness of my siding to three quarters of an inch. And now I'm done specifying all my layers of my wall. I'm going to select OK. And notice that it's calculated the thickness of my wall and it's five and a half inches. I'm going to come back up here and rename my wall. I originally named it five inches. I'm going to rename it. and I'm calling it five and a half inches. And select OK and then OK. Now I'm going to zoom in and take a look at my wall. And notice that it shows the different layers in, in different colors. Now if you don't see this in color like this, if you don't see the detail, you may have to make changes in your view control bar. If you come down here, this is your view control bar and you may need to select this icon, the level of detail, and select Fine. And you may have to open up this icon and select Realistic. And then you should see this level of detail. So what you see here, shown here in white, that's your gypsum board. This is your stud wall. This is your plywood sheathing. And this is your exterior siding. Now that I've created the structure of my walls, I'm going to place the walls on the concrete. And I want the stud wall and the plywood to rest on the concrete. The siding is going to lap over the edge of the concrete. I'm going to select one of my walls and then choose this command, the Align command. I'm going to align this wall to this reference plane. So I'm going to select this reference plane and I want to align the line between the plywood and the sheathing, uh, Revit defaults to, uh, to try to grab the core center of the wall. If I hover over this line, 
the line between the plywood and the sheathing and I hit tab several times, it'll allow me to select that line. And then I select it and then I lock it into place. And now you can see that the plywood is aligned with the reference plane and it's sitting on the concrete. Now, still in my line command, I'm going to do the same with this wall. I'm going to select this reference plane and then I'm going to hover over this wall and hover between the plywood and the sheathing and hit tab until I select that line. And then it snaps to the reference plane and then I lock it. Now I'm going to do the same in the other corner. I'm still in the align command, I'm going to select this reference plane and then hover here between the plywood and the siding, select tab until I select, I'm able to select that line. It snaps to the line and then I lock it. I'm going to select this reference plane, hover over this interface here between the plywood and the Siding, select tab multiple times until I could select that line. It'll snap to the line and then lock it. I'm going to select modify twice to get out of the line command. I'm going to look at my shed in 3D mode. On my quick access toolbar, I'm going to select 3D, the small house icon. And there's my shed. Uh, the walls appear to be very tall. I need to change that. I'm going to hover over one of the walls and don't select it, just hover over it and then press the tab key. And notice that all four walls are highlighted blue. And now if I click, I'll select all four walls at once. And if I look on my properties menus, you can see that the base constraint for all four walls is the floor. They're sitting on the floor. But the top constraint, it says unconnected. And I'm going to change that if I hover over here this area. There's a small pull down menu. And I'm going to say that the top constraint is the top of plate. And I select that. And you notice that the walls move down to the top of plate. And I could verify that in the elevation view. I'm going to go down to the south elevation, select on that. And I'm looking at my walls now and they're sitting on the concrete. I'm going to go to my view control bar and change to realistic. And notice now I can see uh, the texture of my siding and the walls are sitting on the concrete slab and across. Zoom out a bit and you could see that the walls are sitting on the floor and they go up to the top of plate.